everyone, welcome to this week's Karma Cards. So I have an interesting message that came through this week from the team. And it reminds me of something that they've said to me over and over throughout the years, which is that they're, they're always asking me to keep an open mind. And it's so interesting because the natural, like the natural human response is to decide Right, our brain, especially the left hemisphere, which is the logic, logical, analytical side of our brain, it wants to decide what something is and be done with it. It likes to categorize and put things into a box so that we can be done. So it's not something that's left open that we have to continue to ponder. And so there's a real strong urge in myself and I, and I think in all of humanity to decide something about, like make a decision, come to a conclusion about any given topic so that we can sort of close the book on it and be done. But I'm always being encouraged to keep my mind open and um, so that the, so more wisdom can come through. So again, they show me that when we decide on something, and this is going to sound like a contradiction because I always talk about the power of decision, the power of making a choice. So this is where it, do, it even gets tricky to talk about because the there is a power in deciding on something, especially an action you're going to take or what direction you're going to move in. And yet we're also asked to keep our minds open so that we can receive more information. So what they do is they show me what it looks like when we've closed our mind on something, we've made a decision about something like, um, there's only one shade of red. Let's say that's a decision I'm gonna make. There's only one shade of red. I've closed my mind to the options of variations on the shade of red. What happens is we go static. They show me like the information almost becomes rock-like. It's static, it holds a frequency. And what's happening in the mind is that the reticular activator gets set. So the RAS at the back of your head, the filtration system gets set. So if I were to make that decision, I would literally make it so. I would block out my own ability to see various shades of red by making a hard decision about it and closing my mind to it. Whereas, I can keep my mind open where I believe, I think there's only one shade of red, but I'm not sure. Just that one statement, I'm not sure, allows the mind to stay open, allows your filtration system to stay open. And the longer you question it, the more subtlety and variations you're going to see in the shade of red in my example. So they show me that when we close our mind to something, it becomes static and almost like a rock, right? And so nothing can penetrate, nothing gets through, nothing new happens here. But when we keep our mind open, it flows like water. It flows, it can expand, it can adapt, it can move around things. More information comes in and in turn, that reticular activating system stays slightly more flexible and open and can allow more points of data to actually come into your consciousness. And it was really interesting because I was reading from the book of Secret Wisdom. The book of Secret R Wisdom, I'll put a link to that book uh, on Amazon down below so you can go check it out. It's a really good book. The audiobook is beautiful. <laughs> if you wanna listen to it, it's really good. Um, but I was listening to a part of that book, or I was reading it rather, a part of that book and it was talking about what negation does and that is similar to so negating something is like basically denying it right I'm not gonna like if going back to my example if I'm saying there's only one shade of red anytime I confront something that would be maybe a multiple or a different shade of red I'm gonna negate that and say no that's red there's no it's not a different shade it's just red right so I'm blocking being able to receive new data, even if it comes into my experience. And, you know, it got me thinking about this because we do this to ourselves in our own lives in all sorts of ways, especially, and I've been, I was really pondering this, why do we block good things from coming to our lives? Why don't we allow ourselves 
to go into something that feels better more often. We literally block it. And an example of this is when we are trying to change our thoughts. Let's say you have a gratitude practice and you do it a couple of times and it feels really good. You're like, oh my gosh, feels good to be to recognize what's working for me, what what I'm grateful for. But I'll notice that I'll do it for a while and then I'll stop. And then it's like things slowly feel like a little less bright, a little less colorful until I again re-engage with that activity. And I was just wondering why is it? Because I, I know that I do it, I've seen my clients do it, where we sort of fall out of sync with what we want. Um, and I, I'm i still trying to determine what that could be. And I think it part of it is that it requires a lot of effort if it's not your baseline energy, if it's not what you're doing on a regular basis, you're going to have to exert more effort. And let's be honest, there's some times where we don't wanna do that, especially when our frequency is already low. When it's already low, it can feel hard to exert more effort. And many times we kind of stay in a mid to low frequency until we can't take it anymore. And then it's like the pain of being there too long kind of kicks us in the butt to exert more effort and we exert that effort and then we raise our frequency. So I find it really interesting that we have we have this pattern of sort of negating or blocking what could help us, even if we know it could help us, even if we know making this choice that feels like more effort is going to lead to something better, we can still get in our own way and block that. And I share this with you, not not to shame anybody. I do it myself. I catch myself all the time. But I've been um, committing lately to putting more effort in. I've, I've been committing to that discomfort of like, I don't want to do this right now. And yet I'm going to do it right now because this is actually what I want. So it's like you really have to keep close to you that desire that you want the the frequency you want the feeling you want especially the feeling you want that i find is is really a key one because the feeling will create the frequency and everything that you're feeling comes from what you're thinking so it it's really something that you have to make a choice about again make a decision about and engage in but i find it interesting that we tend to fall out of it and even get resistance to it and what I was reading about when it comes to negating is how much, not only does it affect us in the physical world, for example, whatever we res resist seeing, we don't get to experience. And, an, and a prime example of this is with intuitive abilities. You know, there's been for a long time, it has been made to seem as if certain people have these extra gifts that the rest of us don't have. And it simply isn't true. They are the other part of your senses. So your senses have like a spectrum. And here's the physical world and your physical senses. And here's the non-physical world and the extension of those physical senses or their non-physical counterparts. You absolutely have these extrasensory perceptions whether it's clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairolfactory, clairgustience, which is, you know, the psychic taste, psychic smell, clairsentience, all of them. You have them all. But for a long time, we were being told the story of like, no, you don't. This is unusual. This is hyper rare. Only these people have it. And if you take that in as a belief, what you're doing is negating even though you don't know you're doing that, by the way, most people didn't know they were shutting themselves down because of what they had heard. But what we were doing was negating the fact that we have these senses. When we do that to ourselves, it's like we turn off a switch. It's like you can't get to them because you've denied it, right? You can't have what you're denying. So if you're telling yourself only that person has these abilities and I don't, then you actually don't because it's a light switch you've turned off. Now, if you change your mind about it and say, I never knew I had it, but now I'm discovering I do, 
I don't know how to use them yet. That's sort of like turning the light switch on slowly. As you turn the light switch back on, these extra sensory um, senses can come back online. And so that's one example of how we experience negating in the physical world. But apparently it even works in the subtle world. Now this is where it gets interesting because we are creator beings. We are, so you get to decide how this plays out and how it ends. And I've always wondered this because, you know, we, there's like a sort of a cultural belief or maybe it's just a, you know, generally held belief that one thing happens when we go to the other side. So as we cross out of this life, we're going to experience something similar, right? And we're going to see a light. We're going to walk in magical fields. I don't know. Go sit on a cloud. <laughs> Everybody's got a, a slightly different variation about what's going on on the other side. But here's the thing. This ability to create doesn't end in this physical life. You are a creator being. That's the biggest, it's like one of the biggest parts that is you, is this ability to create. It keeps going even after the physical life. And so what, I, what I've known for a long time, what my team has told me and what that book just really reconfirms is that whatever you believe is going to happen is going to happen. And so people who like don't believe anything happens after they pass over, go into some kind of like deep sleep almost until they're ready to choose differently. Isn't that interesting? So it's like if you believe you're going to go over there and have this amazing life, you are. If you believe you're going to go over there and come right back, you probably will. If you believe you're going to go over there and nothing happens, nothing happens. It's, it's so interesting how that works, even in the subtle world. And in the subtle world, it's more apparent what we're negating. For example, if, um, like in my dreams, and maybe and just, you might have had these kind of dreams too, from time to time I fly. And the feeling of flying is so real that a part of me as I'm waking up goes, if I could just figure it out, I know I could do it. I know I could do it. Like I could feel it in my body, like it's possible. Of course, I've never actually flown or levitated <laughs> while in this physical world, but there's a mechanism in, in my consciousness that believes in it so deeply that I just know it could happen. And of course, in the dreams, I can fly. A lot of times it's like every single time it's a discovery, it's like, oh my God, I'm doing it. And then I'm doing it, right? You might have had dreams similar to that too. Well, it's interesting because in the subtle world, if you were to negate the idea of flying, you could be this non-physical entity who can't fly where others could because you don't believe in it. So we get to experience the effect even faster over there. there there's just a quicker turnaround between what you're telling yourself that you believe and then what you experience. And it's definitely happening in this world too. That's why it's so important to recognize the beliefs that you hold and ask yourself, is this belief getting me what I want or is it getting in my way? Is it a belief based in what I believe is possible from myself or is it based in what I believe I'm limited in or what I'm afraid of? And then to really question it because the questioning is what reduces that negation and that decision that it can't happen. As soon as you start to question, that's the mind opening back up. And as soon as our mind opens up, more information can come inside. You know, this is why how like in science, it's never set. Science is not set. It keeps changing, right? It keeps evolving and growing and this is a good thing because what it means is that there's it's open there's an openness in that category to expansion and seeing more and as long as we stay open we get to see more and we get to learn right that you know newtonian physics for example is sort of limited when you start to see quantum physics but they work together and they're and 
there, there had to be a start point in order for it to develop into what it is. And it starts with asking the questions, coming up with an observable reason, and then allowing yourself to stay open to what if it's not that, what if it's this, and allowing more in. So my, I guess my point today for the Karma Cards message is recognizing where you might be limiting yourself or negating something in your life because you simply have a belief that tells you it is not so. My, my guidance would be to gently question that, not because you have to change it, but by opening yourself up to questions about what if this, what if it isn't true? Like if you were to say, I can't skateboard. I don't know why that's coming in, but I can't skateboard. I currently do not skateboard and I've never had that uh, type of agility to skateboard. But if I were to say to myself, yeah, I can't skateboard, look, I've just negated it. It's not happening until I question it and go, I've never been able to in the past, but what if I could now? I know how to balance and balancing is a big part of skateboarding and I'm actually pretty good at balance, so maybe I can. And I've already started to open it back up and were there a skateboard present, I would probably have better luck with this mindset than the mindset I was just holding. And so to you for this week, where is it that you are blocking yourself from me being able to receive have what you want or where are you holding a belief that you're waiting maybe for somebody else or something outside of you to prove untrue i'm going to tell you right now it can't be proven untrue until you open your mind to it right remember the rock versus the water you can't add more information to the rock it's set but you can add more information to the water and so if you find yourself holding a set belief you're going to prove yourself true there because nothing can be added to that. See if you can open it up a little bit, right? And no one's saying you have to change your mind. You might open your mind and go, nope, this is how I feel, or I actually don't care. I'm okay with this being set. That's fine. It's just a matter of, are you doing this to yourself somewhere where you're actually trying to create something, but you feel like you're hitting a wall? If so, this is what's going on, and it's time to ask yourself questions to open up your consciousness. And with that, let's do this week's Karma Cards. All right, for those of you who are new to Karma Cards, let me quickly show you how these work. I have three decks here, planets, signs of the zodiac, and the houses of astrology. And I've already asked my team, what is the message for us this week? And I have two sets of answers, a set in red, which are action related, and a set in blue, which are outcome related. And the way that you play is you feel in with your beautiful intuition to see what do you need this week? Are you looking for action related answers or do you wanna see how things are going to resolve for outcome? And of course, you can always choose both. And while you're choosing, let me tell you the timing for this reading. This reading is for September 15th through the 22nd. And let me give you the flavor of this reading. I was really surprised because we almost had almost the exact same reading we got last week. So we've got Mars again, planet of action in the sign of Libra, which is about balance, harmonizing partnerships. And then they switched it up and gave us the seventh house, which is the house that Libra rules. So again, the emphasis again is on partnerships, harmony and balance, how things come together and work together. So it's similar, but a little bit more inside the relationship wheelhouse. For those who are choosing action, your spiritual action at this time is to energize relationships diplomatically. So again, the emphasis in this window is to bring more attention to your relationships. How are you working with other people, the people that you love, your family members, your friends, really anyone you're in relationship to, that is where all the cosmic energy is sort of pointing for us right now this week. Um, and diplomatically, remember, is that we're working together. So we're considering the other side of the relationship. So even though 
Mars is, is the planet guiding us and Mars can be confrontational. It can be blunt. It can be in your face. We're being asked to finesse that with the sign that hangs out in polarity to Mars. Mars rules Aries and Libra, which is ruled by Venus. So this is like the divine feminine, sacred masculine combination, sacred masculine, divine feminine. Libra is opposite. Mars is me, Libra is us. So we need that diplomacy. More tact is called for than what Mars would instigate. Mars would like to get in there, get in your face, get to the point where Libra is really about taking the time to make sure both sides are getting a chance to express, uh, really listening, being with the other person, being present. That's all coming from Libra, Libra. And since more emphasis is on that side, that's what we're being told, is that even though we're asked to be direct, we're asked to do it with finesse. Mental action at this time. Confront the beauty of relationships confronts there's mars look directly at the beauty of relationships why did we come to this planet together why aren't we just coming in individually putting our head down powering through this experience and getting out because we actually come here for each other and with each other our soul contracts have plans, contingency plans in them with other people. We do this together and humanity is a communal being. It's a communal type of species. So we need each other. We suffer the most when we're isolated and alone. So we're being asked right now to really focus in on why relationships are so beautiful and why they're so necessary because they're integral to us being able to do the work we came here to do. Physical action at this time. Force yourself to do it with your partners and get a fair deal. So there might be a part of you that does want to isolate or back out or feels like it's too hard when other people get involved. It's time to focus on other people being involved. It's time to include other people. And the fair deal is, right, we're still being asked to focus on boundaries, are having strong boundaries of our own, respecting the boundaries of others. That allows us to get a fair deal. If we state up front what we will and will not tolerate, and we allow the other people to say that too, then we are we feel safer together. We feel safer in working together. And that allows us to get a fair deal. Otherwise, without that, it's lopsided. Like without knowing the boundaries of someone else, you might think you're doing things in a fair manner, but it's being interpreted as not fair. And same with you. If you don't state what does work for you and what doesn't work for you, people don't know if you're getting your needs met. And by being able to state those boundaries, it allows us to know if I'm working within your needs or if I'm stepping away from them and same in the other direction. Okay, now let's look at outcomes for Mars in Libra in the seventh house of partnerships. Your spiritual outcome at this time is the drive for cooperation to perfect balance. So you're naturally going to be driven in this way. And I have to say over the last week where we had a similar message where it was about the focus on relationships, I have seen that to be the case that it's been dominantly and the front of my mind is working with other people and really bringing more attention to those areas. And it's, it's definitely where the payoff is right now. So you're already going to want to do this work. You're, you're naturally being driven to cooperate. And as you're doing that, you are feeling more balanced in your life. Mental outcome at this time, the confrontation of decisions about cooperation. This is interesting because the topic today was about looking at decisions and questioning them. And I feel like the area it's asking you to do that in is in how you cooperate. What is cooperation? What does it mean to co-operate together, right? So we might be looking at 
how we approach working with other people uh, in intimate relationships or family dynamics or um, work associations, we're going to want to look at and directly question, am I holding any hard beliefs around cooperation that are that's limiting me? And can I start questioning those? As you do, you experience more harmony and balance. Physical outcome at this time action resulting from the fairness shown by your partners. Now here's the beautiful thing. It's not just you doing the work. Everyone is under this energetic influence of wanting to do this work. We're actually moving very close to Libra season. It's coming up here very soon around the 21st or so is when that will start with the fall equinox as well. So already energetically in the greater cosmos we're leaning in that direction anyway so the good news here is this wanting to work together and cooperate is not just coming from a you experience it's a group experience happening which is going to result in things moving forward that maybe felt like they weren't moving forward before action will occur from this so there's a a really positive flowy energy about considering others and how you're relating they'll be doing the same the more conscious they are of that the quicker the action occurs the less conscious they are it moves slowly but it still comes about so it's a pretty good feeling window where people are wanting harmony and balance with each other so I would say lean into that and look at held beliefs around relationships certain like maybe of certain relationships where you're holding beliefs it's really good to question those and again questioning doesn't mean that we abandon what we thought before it simply means that we're reinvestigating what we think and we're looking at it like is this working for me is this thought helping me or hindering me where we find they're helpful we'll like go okay yeah that's that makes sense and we stick with it where we find them to be hindering is where we have this beautiful opportunity to do some cleanup work and where we do them do that cleanup work we alleviate a lot of suffering and pain in our lives and therefore pain that might be being caused to somebody else um, and it's a beautiful elevating energy so I'm really excited for that this week it feels good and it feels, you know, that even though we've got Mars in there, which can tend to be, like I said, uh, intense energy, it's softened so much by where it's focusing that it takes that intensity and it, it smooths it. They're just showing me like wood being sanded till it's nicely polished, right? It's the kind of feeling that it gives us. Um, so enjoy this energy enjoy being with that open feeling and really creating um, more space in the mind by simply asking questions and as we continue to ask questions more wisdom can be poured into us from the universe and with that i'm sending you so much love Mwah. thank you for watching subscribe now and hit the notification bell so that you know the next time i release a new video until then, stay magical. Hi, my name is Therese Tucker, and I want to welcome you to Mercury Pod Coaching. I created this group coaching program to help you move out of procrastination and into traction towards your big goals. I know how it feels to dream really big and then all of a sudden find yourself sitting there spinning in place, not getting anywhere closer to your goal. It can be really easy to get caught up in feeling flustered and confused and not know what action to take and so you completely stop taking any action at all. If this sounds familiar to you, then there's a good chance that you've got some mindset blocks in the way that are preventing you from taking actions right now that can get you closer to your big dream and create real change in your life. Here's what you need. You need someone who can see those mindset blocks and help you get out of indecision, move into inspired action and do it quickly. And that's where I come in. So what is the Mercury Coaching Pod? 
It is a 30 day coaching program where you will have weekly coaching calls live with me to help you implement your plans and take action now. In this group coaching program, you will also get one private session with me where we can completely deep dive into what it is you're trying to create and I can help you create the action tasks that you're going to need to complete in 30 days to get ahead. If you're ready to jumpstart your goals and get going right now, then you are the perfect person for this pod coaching program. So if you're interested, hit the get access button below. And of course, I look forward to seeing you in the Mercury pod coaching program. All my love. Mwah.